The Skinwalker Ranch is a section of land approximately 480 square acres in size, just southeast of Ballard, Utah. Over the years, countless stories of paranormal activity, encounters with strange animals, UFOs and even animal mutations have been reported from within the ranch. Some of these experiences ranked as some of the most compelling paranormal events ever recorded. The Utes, an old Native American tribe, fought to expel the Navajo from the Skinwalker Basin shortly before the arrival of white settlers. The Navajo would retreat from the basin, but not before cursing the ranch with the presence of a shape-shifting demon. The Myers family settled in the ranch in 1905, making a small homestead on the property. Although they didn't ever publicly report strange creatures or occurrences, they would abruptly abandon their newly built property some short years later, opting to quietly and quickly move far away. When the Sherman family moved to the ranch in 1994 to breed cattle, they were startled by the impressive array of bolts that covered the doors and windows of the main house. Recalling a 2002 quote, there were dead bolts on both sides of the doors. Even the kitchen cabinets had bolts on them, and at both ends of the house, iron stakes and heavy chains had been installed. We guessed the previous tenants had positioned large guard dogs in the front and back of the home, but at the time we had no idea why it wouldn't be long before they would understand. Within a few days of moving in, their livestock started being visited by vicious, strange creatures apparently immune to harm. The Shermans would get a good look at one of these beasts, reporting that it appeared to be a large wolf. When shot with a rifle, the bullets had no effect. Only when blasted several times with a large shotgun would the creature desist from sadistic attack upon their cattle. Other reports from the Sherman's time on the ranch included shafts of light rising like pillars from the ground, fields mysteriously lighting up like stadiums. Massive, semi-visible, shapeless entities also terrorized the family, and multiple people often simultaneously heard a deep, incomprehensible, disembodied voice speaking to them seemingly from above. Strange disturbances in their home left the family with no safe place, eventually opting to all sleep huddled together on the floor of one room. The final straw was when Terry Sherman sent his three dogs to chase glowing blue orbs into the woods, all subsequently being killed by the spheres. Cattle mutilations have also been a large part of the folklore of the surrounding area for decades. They became so frequent, in fact, the National Institute for Discovery Science's founder, Robert Bigelow, purchased the land in 1996. His purchase was with the intentions to undertake extensive investigations within the ranch, an investigation mysteriously funded, which to this day has been a literal media blackout, even closing down a public road running through the vicinity. A move objected by the locals, you have to wonder what they found. Since the moment of the purchase, no subsequent activities within the ranch have been reported or even admitted to the National Institute for Discovery Sciences maintaining a complete denial of any new events upon the ranch to this day. Not only has a multi-million dollar operation been undertaken within the ranch, but whatever they found, it seems they decided would be better withheld from the general public. As always, thanks for watching guys. Until next time, take care. Has ancient alien technology finally been discovered within Russia? According to several talented UFO enthusiasts, along with a number of scientists, that is exactly what has happened. A team from Princeton University in America and the University of Florence in Italy have discovered a quote, quasi-crystal, so named because of its unorthodox arrangement of atoms, found within a meteorite from a remote region of northeastern Russia. This crystal, long thought impossible to be formed naturally, due to being too energetically unstable and atomically manipulated. When the team discovered that the meteorite contained this mysterious, ancient, intelligently designed material, they merely moved the goalposts, simply stating that it can indeed be formed naturally. Technically, scientists describe quasi-crystals as quasi-periodic, being manually ordered, no longer found on the periodic table. Although they exhibit a pattern that fills all available mass continuously, they lack what scientists and mathematicians term translational symmetry. Simply put, they are not naturally occurring materials. The meteorite in which it was found is believed to be around 4.5 billion years old. Yet alas, when it picked up this perplexing and possibly alien passenger may remain unknown. 
UFO enthusiasts and scientists alike have previously hypothesized that evidence for alien life would, in all possibility, be found in a form such as this. Pointing out that quasi-crystals, being a novel form of matter, should actually be seen as artifacts of alien artificially created technology. No one has ever been able to explain how quasi-crystals can be formed by natural processes, and no one is ever likely to. It just does not happen. Their forbidden symmetry, making them impossible to be formed naturally. The only other known quasi-crystals, besides those found in the Chukotka meteorites, were only recently synthesized within laboratory conditions by scientists. Being very hard, with low friction characteristics, also a low heat conduction, quasi-crystals are a very useful product, used in a wide range of high-speed technologies, such as the coatings of airplanes and stealth fighters. Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling, the idol of the American Chemical Society and one of the most famous scientists in the world, argued till his last days against quasi-periosity in crystals' mere existence. He didn't even believe we would ever manage to create it. Does this sound like a naturally occurring material to you? How did this complex material end up on and within an ancient meteorite? Did this lump of space debris once collide with an alien craft, somewhere out there in deep space? It seems, regardless of what certain scientific bodies would have you presume, that is indeed the most likely scenario. In the past, whenever an artifact or ancient ruin was to rear its unexplainable head, funded parties would scramble to quickly rebury them within museum archives, or to simply ignore and not publicly share such discoveries. As such, many of the sites that we cover here upon our channel are not only notoriously difficult to track down and study, but are also very often unfamiliar to our many viewers. One continues their way through the same journey as you and I, by perusing the many subjects we have already covered. The feelings of confusion as having never been confronted with said locations and data therein actually becomes a sense of predictability and a symptom of a much larger conspiracy. As we push on with more and more sites and artifacts, further compounding the proof of this cover-up and deepening our evidential arsenal regarding this ignored and in some cases suppressed history upon our planet. It is inevitable that sooner or later, the movement will indeed begin to move. And this is our mission. The Inga Stone, located in the middle of the Inga River in Paraiba State, northeast of Brazil, an artifact like any other which has an unexplained and possibly controversial history is little known to the world. It is a rock formation which covers an area of approximately 250 meters squared. However, upon this enormous rock is an unknown language with, quite possibly, an untold story. 46 meters long and 3.8 meters high, there are etchings made all over this stone, whose meanings, although extensively studied by some of the best minds on the planet, remain unknown and undeciphered. Several figures are carved in low relief, illustrations of animals, fruits, and human constellations like Orion and our very own Milky Way can be seen. Scholars presume that it was created by natives that lived in the area until the 18th century, although any compelling evidence to support this claim has yet to surface. Thought to depict animals, fruits, weapons, humans, possible ancient aircrafts or birds, and what appears to be a table of contents with stories divided into sections with each symbol connected to the number of a chapter, what it says is not known. Ignatius Rolum, professor of Greek and Latin theology, argued the symbols were similar to ancient Phoenician carvings, while others felt the symbols were related to ancient ruins. An additional popular hypothesis is, of course, ancient aliens, since the Inga's symbols were so different to any others found. Some researchers, such as Claudio Quintans of the Parabeno Center of Ufology, has postulated that a spaceship landed in the Inga area during this ancient time, and the symbols were probably drawn by these extraterrestrial guests. An incredible stone, 
with a history we may one day unravel. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash, and that the US government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. Since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of US government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies in satellite and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft, often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos. These events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming evidence to suggest that these sightings were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools, two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies, this due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggests. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting it down to mass hysteria. The witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur. Furthermore, supporting their claims, other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery-green saucer-shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the US government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth which we find highly compelling. We don't usually cover the regular, unusual anomalies found by the countless amateur UFO investigators out there who are tirelessly combing the terrain in and around our neighboring planets, moons, and asteroids in a search for possible alien craft, artificial structures, or even ancient ruins. Although some of these formations can indeed be intriguing, they're often easily disregarded as mere natural formations. However, our next anomaly, we believe, could be seen as a considerable mystery. Since its launch on the 9th of March 2003, the probe explorer Hayabusa has completed several interplanetary flybys, traveling a total of 2 billion kilometers to arrive at an asteroid known as Itakawa, or more precisely, 25143 Itakawa, on September 12, 2005, successfully carrying out numerous scientific observations of the asteroid since then. However, what is astonishing regarding this new research is what has been found within these new images taken of our space-traveling neighbor. It seems, during its enormous orbital journey around the cosmos, it's picked up an unusual passenger. Clearly no normal space debris, 
this mysterious object, now perched or possibly impaled upon the front of the asteroid, looks for all the world like an artificial satellite. A huge, perfectly spherical object with three clearly distinct yet not too damaged legs or more likely receiver antenna protruding from the area which impacted the asteroid. It's resting upon the so-called Woomera Desert District of the Space Rock and was clearly not there the last time it was photographed. Could this object possibly be a satellite from an alien planet? Maybe still active? Did the asteroid have an extremely close call with a possible alien neighbor, avoiding an impact we would have never learnt of? Itakawa is a Mars crosser asteroid, and interestingly, it was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission by a space going nation, and is still the smallest asteroid ever photographed. It was discovered in 1998 by the Linear Project and was given the provisional designation 1998 SF36. However, in August 2003, it was officially named after Hideo Itokawa, a Japanese rocket scientist. Maybe Hideo spotted something. The object it now carries is clearly not of normal formation. Not only does it not look natural, but displays a symmetrical design similar to those found within our own artificial objects, such as satellites. And due to this object being caught floating through space, just like our own satellites do, it's undoubtedly a very compelling anomalous object. Was this small asteroid chosen for the first major exploratory program above all other asteroids because the Japanese knew something we didn't? Just what could this object be? We just hope they explore it further and whatever they discover, they share it with the world. Many people believe that the brightest human of our modern age was not in fact Einstein who was actually a man who died penniless and alone, with only his pigeons for company. A man who went by the name Nikola Tesla. When Einstein was once asked how it felt to be the smartest human being on Earth, he famously retorted, I don't know, you will have to ask Nikola Tesla. Throughout Tesla's life, he invented many things which have been of tremendous value to humanity. Yet many still believe that his most valuable of inventions were suppressed whisked away into secret vaults at the time of his death. A life's work, postulations, theories, hypotheses, experiments, and inventions, all concealed from the world, hidden with the motive of protecting a status quo which is moved and shook by some extremely powerful individuals. Individuals whose empires have slowly but surely gained a stranglehold upon the resource distribution and indeed the technological advancement of mankind as a whole. Technological advances in communication and travel have only extended these tentacles of control across the globe. Nikola Tesla often spoke of an invention which he claimed would save the world, a machine making energy free for all, yet alas, for some, this particular area of his work is not our main item of interest tonight, but rather his possible experience of a close encounter with aliens and his subsequent invention which became famously known as an IFO. He eventually gained a patent on the peculiar aircraft which he called the world's first flying saucer. Interestingly, the interior design of the flying saucer matched that of descriptions made by some who have claimed to have seen a UFO from the inside. With a discoidal capacitor that he believed was of sufficient enough to provide enough thrust for the craft to fly. The design included other inventions which he claimed would have allowed the pilot complete control over the direction of the craft. Tesla even decked out the interior of the ship with flat screen television screens and external video cameras for the pilot's blind spots. However, although the patent was indeed granted, the craft lacked a primary power source. Whether or not Tesla had actually developed this and kept it secret is unknown. Clearly a sophisticated and well thought out craft which has conveniently slipped into the archives of history or quite possibly black projects involving secret aircraft developments by the American government. Where the idea for this came from is unknown, however author Tim R. Swartz along with many other researchers and even Tesla himself claims that he was once contacted by aliens via transmissions from outer space. According to Swartz's book, The Lost Journals of Nikola Tesla, Tesla at one point was developing a powerful radio antenna designed to monitor thunderstorms in Earth's skies. 
While testing the device, Swartz claimed that Tesla overheard radio transmissions he believed were actually extraterrestrial communications. Quote, he wondered at the time if he wasn't listening to one planet greeting another, as he put it. From that point on, it became somewhat of an obsession of his to build better and better radio receivers to try to see if he could repeat what he heard. He got to the point where he claimed that he was actually receiving voice transmissions. He said it sounded just like people talking back and forth to each other. He made notes saying that he was actually hearing intelligent beings from another planet talking to each other although he didn't know what language they were speaking, but he still felt he understood them." End quote. Swartz claims that the book was written using sensational data obtained from the inventor's most private papers, kept under wraps by the military and big business concerns of America. Regardless of the actual facts surrounding the origin of the IFO, Tesla was undoubtedly a remarkable human being, one who gave the world some remarkable things. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, Take care.